Look at this mimosa plant. When touched, its leaves close up and lower themselves. This grasshopper is even more sensitive. It hops away well before the hand reaches it. The instinct of animals and plants to perceive and respond to changes in the environment is known as irritability. This irritability enables animals and plants to effectively look for food, escape from enemies, and seek refuge from danger. An African snail moves slowly. We can watch how it perceives changes in the environment. An African snail has a hard calcareous shell on its back, but its body is soft and supple. This mound of flesh is its foot. The surface of the foot shows a wave-like movement which carries the whole body forward. There is a mouth at the tip of the head. There are four flexible antennae on top of the mouth, with an eye at the tip of each antenna. Flash a torch at the eyes of the snail and see how it reacts. Touch the snail with a cotton bud and see how it reacts. Place a drop of vinegar on the piece of glass. The snail seems to have smelt it. It seems not to like the smell of the vinegar. Give some vegetables, potatoes and carrots to the snail. It seems to be able to recognize the different taste of each. The reaction of the African snail shows that animals are in general responsive to light, touch, smell and taste. Man can perceive the environment much more effectively than a snail. Some organs in the human body are specialized in perceiving changes in the environment. They're known as sense organs. The eye is an organ for seeing things. Light from the outside enters the eyeball through the pupil, is adjusted by the lens and focused on the retina as an image. This image is an inverted image of the original object. There are a lot of sensory cells on the retina. They're sensitive to the stimulation of light and so are also known as light-sensitive cells. Every light-sensitive cell is connected to a nerve ending. The light-sensitive cells on the retina convert the stimulation of the image into nerve impulses. which are transmitted to the cerebrum to form a sense of the image of the object. This is known as vision. In the process, the cerebrum turns the inverted image created by the lens right side up. There are two types of light-sensitive cells on the retina. Some cells are shaped like rods and are called rod cells. They are more sensitive and can react to weak light, but can only give rise to vision in black and white. Some cells are shaped like cones and are known as cone cells. They are able to form color vision, but can only react when there is strong light. So when we look at this picture in the light, we find it very colorful. Without light, the same picture seems to become black and white. Different types of cone cells are sensitive to different colors. Together they form color vision. If some of these cone cells do not function properly, a person may not be able to distinguish some colors or may even only see a patch of gray. This is known as color blindness. To determine whether a person is color blind, we can use a test chart. 
On these pictures, there are one or two numbers which a colorblind person cannot see. The image you see now is affected by lighting and is not accurate for testing purposes. You should use an actual test chart to do the test. Colorblindness is a congenital hereditary visual defect. There's currently no cure for it. We have two eyes located in the front of our head. Their fields of vision are forward and overlap in the middle. Is there any advantage in this? This child looks at the point of the pencil with her two eyes. She reaches out and touches the pencil easily. Then she blocks her left eye, looks at the pencil and reaches out. Why is it that she can't touch it? Now she blocks her right eye, looks at the pencil and reaches out. Again, why is it that she can't touch it? If she blocks her left eye, her line of vision would be like this. She sees the pencil, but the pencil could be at any one point on the straight line. If she blocks her right eye, her line of vision would be like this. She also sees the pencil, but the pencil could be at any one point on the straight line. If she looks with both eyes, the lines of vision of the two eyes overlap and help ascertain the position of the pencil. So two eyes side by side seeing things in front can facilitate more flexible and accurate vision, making it possible to judge the depth and distance of the image. This is known as stereoscopic vision. Before setting off, a driver checks the rear view mirrors of the car. If necessary, he has to adjust the angles. This is to ensure that he knows the traffic condition behind when driving. Sometimes when a driver looks into the rearview mirror, he may suddenly find that there is no image of the traffic behind. Why is this so? Look at this card. Cover your left eye and look at the dot with your right eye. You will see the dot and the cross at the same time. Move the card slowly back and forth. You will lose the cross at a certain position and then see it again. This is known as the blind spot effect. This man is checking a student's retina. With the help of an optical instrument, the image of the retina is transmitted onto the computer screen. This is the retina of a normal person. The yellow spot here is the optic knob. The dark spot here is the yellow spot. There are no light-sensitive cells in the optic knob. It is commonly known as the blind spot. There are no light-sensitive cells at the blind spot on the retina. Light-sensitive cells are responsible for transmitting the images of objects to the cerebrum in the form of impulses. So when an image is formed on the blind spot, it seems as if we can't see it. This is known as the blind spot effect. When we focus our vision on the dot on the card, the movement of the eyeball projects the image of the dot onto the yellow spot of the retina. At the same time, the image of the cross is projected onto the light-sensitive cells nearby. We can then see the cross. When the card is moved to a particular position, the image of the dot is projected onto the yellow spot and the image of the cross is projected onto the blind spot. Now we can't see the cross. When driving, if the rear view mirrors are at the correct angle, they will reflect the images behind onto the light sensitive part of the retina and make the driver aware of the approaching cars at the back. But if the rearview mirrors are set at the wrong angle, they'll reflect the images behind onto the blind spot of the retina. The driver will not be aware of the approaching cars behind. The blind spot effect is very dangerous in driving because if a driver thinks there are no other cars behind him, he may suddenly slow down or stop. This could then result in a collision. Look at the human ear. 
All parts of the ear except the pinna are located within the skull. The human ear comprises three major parts, external ear, middle ear and inner ear. There are three parts to the inner ear, semicircular canals, vestibule and cochlea. The outer ear, middle ear and cochlea form a system to collect sound waves. They vibrate with the sound and create nerve impulses, giving a sense of hearing. The human ear is not only an organ of hearing, it's also an organ which gives a sense of the position and balance of the body. This function is carried out by the vestibule and the semicircular canals. The vestibule is shaped like an overturned pear filled with fluid. On the inner wall there are many hair cells. The hair is capped by a gelatinous layer with otoliths studded on top of the layer. When the body inclines forward, backward or to the sides, the fluid flows in the opposite direction, pushing the otoliths and the gelatinous layer and stimulating the hair cells so that they release nerve impulses and give rise to a sense of the position of our body. There are three semicircular canals in the inner ear. They are connected and at right angles to one another. There is also fluid inside. If we cut open one of the tubes, we can see what's inside. The part of the tube at the junction with the vestibule expands into a spherical shape. There is a process on the inner wall of the tube with hair cells inside. The hair is capped by a gelatinous layer. When a man turns, the fluid in the semicircular canal goes in the opposite direction. The gelatinous layer in touch with the hair is pushed by the fluid, causing the hair cells to release nerve impulses. These then travel to the cerebrum, giving a sense of balance. If a man stands up and turns round and round, the lateral semicircular canal will detect this movement. If a man turns a somersault or falls forwards or backwards, the posterior semicircular canal will detect this movement or loss of balance. If a man turns a somersault or falls to either side, the anterior semicircular canal will detect this movement or loss of balance. If you travel on a bus or a ship which moves or rolls rapidly in every direction, the fluid in the vestibule and the semicircular canals will flow unceasingly. This brings about irregular movements of the gelatinous layer on the hair cells, and the impulses confuse the cerebrum and create a sense of disequilibrium. This is known as car or seasickness. What does it smell like? It smells good. And now? It smells bad. Our nose is not only used for breathing, it is also an olfactory organ. The nasal cavity is deep in our skull. It's made up of a lot of thin pieces of bone which divide the cavity into a lot of tiny compartments. There are a lot of capillaries beneath the surface of the pieces of bone, and the bones are covered by a mucous membrane. This membrane secretes mucus all the time to make the incoming air warm and moist. As the air flows in, the gaseous substances that are mixed with it will attach to the mucous membrane and stimulate the olfactory nerve endings, giving rise to nerve impulses. The olfactory nerve endings cluster at the top of the nasal cavity, pass through the skull, and converge into an olfactory lobe below the cerebrum. The nerve impulses are transmitted through the olfactory nerves to the cerebrum, giving rise to an awareness of different smells.
It's bitter. It's hot. We use our tongue to detect the taste of substances in liquids. Different substances generate different tastes. There are many protrusions and grooves at the surface of a human tongue. Look at a cross section of a tongue under the microscope. On the sides of the protruding parts of the tongue are taste buds, which detect flavors. In each taste bud is a tuft of hairy cells with cilia reaching out. When they come into contact with chemical substances, they release nerve impulses to the cerebrum, giving rise to a sense of taste. Experiments have shown that taste buds sensitive to a taste of sweetness are clustered at the tip of the tongue. Taste buds sensitive to the sour taste are clustered along the two sides of the tongue. Taste buds sensitive to the bitter taste are clustered at the back of the tongue. Taste buds sensitive to the salty taste are clustered at the two sides near the tip of the tongue. The water is neither hot nor cold. It's hot. It's cold. One pin. One pin. Two pins. Two pins. Two pins. Two pins. One pin. One pin. One pin. Two pins. One pin. One pin. The human skin is sensitive to temperature changes in the environment and to the touch of substances. This is generally known as the sense of touch. The skin is made up of three layers, epidermis, dermis, and subcutaneous tissue. The subcutaneous tissue is next to the muscles. There's usually fat in the subcutaneous tissue. There are sweat glands, hair follicles, hair, and several kinds of sensory receptors. These are receptors of temperature. These are receptors of touch. These are receptors of pressure. And these nerve endings spreading over the epidermis are receptors of pain. Receptors of touch are densely clustered in the skin of the fingers. Therefore, the fingers are more sensitive than other parts of the body and seldom make mistakes. One pin. One pin. Two pins. Two pins. There are fewer receptors of touch in the skin of the shoulders and the back. Therefore, the back and the shoulders are less sensitive to touch and make mistakes easily. One pin. Two pins. One pin. One pin.